Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry and what we're going to go through now are the structure and bonding trends as you move across period 3 on the periodic table. So we are concentrating here on period 3 which starts with sodium and ends all the way over here with argon. Now I've not got a graph for this but there is one in your notes if you go to Ashton Sixth Form College and what we're going to look at to begin with are our metals. Now our metals here are going to be sodium, magnesium and aluminium. And what we're looking at really are the melting and boiling points as we move across period three as a way of describing the type of bonding and structure that we have because it's a direct indicator. For instance, you would expect that metals have high melting and boiling points and that's because they have metallic bonds. Now the metallic bond, remember, is the attraction of the positive metal cation to the delocalized sea of electrons. And so as we move across the period, going from sodium to magnesium onto aluminium, we see the strength of the metallic bond increasing. And that's because for aluminium, there are gonna be more electrons in the delocalized sea, and the cation is smaller and more highly charged. And so that means aluminium has the strongest type of metallic bonding, and therefore the highest melting and boiling points of the three metals, and sodium has the lowest melting and boiling point. I can't stress enough that it's the metallic bonds that we're breaking when we melt and boil these metals. There's nothing here to do with covalent bonds and intermolecular forces. Moving across to silicon, silicon is in the same group, group four, as carbon, and so it has a giant covalent lattice structure. Now, we've got to this word lattice quite early on. I want to remind you that a lattice is a regular and repeating pattern of whatever the context requests. So for instance, for the metallic bonding, a lattice was a regular and repeating pattern of positive metal cations surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. Now, when we get to the silicon, it's a giant covalent lattice, so it's a regular and repeating pattern of silicon atoms in covalent bonds, which are extended throughout. So it's bond after bond after bond. And in fact, silicon has the same type of structure with tetrahedral silicon atoms as carbon does in diamonds. So you can imagine those as having very similar structures. Now that means that the giant covalent lattice requires breaking covalent bonds to melt or boil. There's no intermolecular forces there for silicon. There's no metallic bonds. It's breaking covalent bonds in order to melt and boil. And since a covalent bond is ordinarily stronger than a metallic bond, we expect the silicon to have, and it does, the highest melting and boiling point of period three. Moving over next to phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Now you'd expect perhaps there to be a straight pattern between these, either an increase or a decrease, but it's not. If we were having a graph for this particular section, what we would see is it comes right the way down to phosphorus from silicon, it's a dramatic drop. And then the melting and boiling point, it gets to phosphorus, it goes up a bit for sulfur, and then it comes crashing down again for chlorine and for argon. So why is that? Well, the answer lies in the actual formula for each of the molecules of the elements in question just here. Phosphorus, for instance, is P4. Sulfur is S8. Chlorine is Cl2. And argon is, well, it's just AR. So why is that important? Well, as we can see, these are going to fall into the category of the simple molecular lattice, or the simple covalent lattice, you can call it. But I'm gonna call it the simple molecular lattice because it looks like small. And these are quite small compared to everything else. It's still a lattice, but what we have now, most importantly, are intermolecular forces. Specifically, we're looking at the London intermolecular force. And we know a lot of things about the London intermolecular force from our course at Ashton Six One College. And we know that the stronger London forces between the covalently bonded molecules are found when we have more electrons. So within, for example, the P4, we've got strong covalent bonds, but when we melt or boil it, what we've actually got to break are just the intermolecular forces. Now, phosphorus here, this P4, has got 60 electrons per molecule. The sulfur, as S8, has got 128. The chlorine, as Cl2, has got 34 and argon has just got 18. Now since our sulfur just here has got the most electrons, that means it's going to have the strongest London forces, which means it's going to be the hardest to melt or boil out of these four. And then it's phosphorus, 
and then it's chlorine, and then it's argon. So it doesn't follow a straight pattern in this region because of the number of electrons, and you can relate that to the molar mass of the molecule of this particular simple molecular lattice structure. The bottom line for all of this is over here for these three, we're breaking metallic bonds to melt a boil. For the silicon, and it would be carbon of the period above, we're looking at breaking the covalent bonds. But then when we get to these four just here, a big mistake in the exams for a lot of students is that they say the covalent bonds within these simple molecular structures are being broken, but really that's not the case at all. We're breaking the intermolecular forces between the molecules, which are covalently bonded within the structures. So do be very, very careful with that. I hope that clears up some of the general patterns here with structure and bonding across period three. I'll leave you to the rest of a playlist. Until then, happy revising.